Well, I'm not really sure how to start um, a YouTube video because this is my first one, but if you clicked on this video, you're probably here to learn a little bit more about gun sacks. But before we get started, and if you feel like supporting me, of course, you can go ahead and give this channel a subscribe for more 1960s and 70s content, fashion content, and um, just, you know, rock and roll history, counterculture history, um, and just, you know, those kinds of things. Um, I do a lot of vintage stuff and if you're interested in seeing any of my thrifting slash vintage hauls or um, my vintage or thrifting experiences or um, even just how I do my photography for my Instagram and that kind of thing, you're going to want to go ahead and follow. Um, and uh, yeah, no, I'm just, I have so many plans for this channel and I would love to have a few subscribers. So please go ahead and support if you feel like supporting. So today, many vintage influencers will wear, um, you know, their 1960s and 70s mod dresses, you know, maybe a little bit of psychedelic patterns, and um, you've probably seen them on Instagram if you're part of the vintage community, and um, you've probably also seen a lot of prairie dresses come up in those posts too. And if you're not really sure what prairie dresses are, they're like this dress I have on right now, which is actually a gun sax, and um, I thought it was appropriate for this video. So um, you've probably seen a lot of those, and you know, why are so many vintage influencers spending hundreds of dollars on a dress like this from the 1970s? And you know, why is it such an important part of the 1970s fashion history? Well, I'll tell you. Gun Sax was originally created in 1967 by two women, um, Elle Bailey and um, Carol Miller. Sorry, I had to look at my notes for that one. Um, but those two women um, put together their brand and they started sewing dresses and clothing and that kind of thing. Um, but eventually, a woman named Jessica McClintock came onto the scene and she was the new designer. And um, I've seen in some places that she bought out the company and I've seen in other places that they just hired her on as a designer. And then I've heard that maybe she just invested in it and then came on as the designer. Um, so I'm not exactly sure what the whole story is behind it and stuff because there is some discrepancies and honestly, it's kind of hard to find a lot of good detailed information on this stuff and not just, you know, an opinion piece here and there. And because Jessica McClintock was so important in, you know, making the brand what it is today, her name is actually stitched on to almost all of the gun sacks tags that I've seen. And there's actually a um, database online that has a bunch of different tags. So if you're ever curious about what some of those gun sacks tag labels look like, you can go ahead and just look up, you know, gun sacks tag labels. And there's a few websites that will give you all of the recorded ones that they have. And there's even some archives that will show you all of the gun sacks dresses. Um, that people have collected in like really large collections and stuff, which is really cool. But not only is Jessica McClintock, you know, integral to um, the brand just for the sake of having her name in there or, you know, just, you know, being the designer, she took it up a whole notch. Um, she took the dresses from like a granny style to like the prairie dress type of style that we know and love today. And then even added a little bit of a Renaissance, um, Edwardian type feel to them um, that made you feel like you could walk right out of a Jane Austen novel and um, and that's kind of the romantic feel that people loved at the time they loved feeling like you know a princess they loved feeling like someone who was casual and cool while also kind of having a little bit of um, a little bit of elegance to them so what are some features that are kind of like the iconic gun sacks features? Because, you know, now that we kind of know where the brand came from and, you know, we know how it went from the prairie style to the renaissance slash, you know, romantic style um, that it, you know, ended up becoming a little bit more of. Um, we want to know what some of the features are. So one of the features on gun sacks dresses is that they're very lacy and pretty and they have a lot of frills and they mix materials together. And while they kind of feel like an older type of um, clothing, they were created with a lot of new materials and stuff. So it wasn't really like, you know, they were doing anything too special. They just knew how to mix fabrics and give people patterns 
and stuff that they loved. And a lot of the dresses um, that Gunsacks created used calico or floral prints or even mixed a bunch of these prints together, uh, mixed with lace and muslin and just a whole bunch of different fabrics. And it made it feel like a mod podge of, um, of just like elegance and grace and all those features from, you know, dresses, you know, years before that, um, that were like, it was just the best of the best. It was the best features from all of the previous dresses and fashion trends and stuff pulled into one dress. And a lot of sources that I saw, um, people said that their favorite part about wearing the gun sacks dresses in the 1970s and, you know, even in the early 1980s and stuff was that they um, were a way to dress up and still seem cool and um, still seem casual all at the same time. And um, it was just kind of one of those things that, you know, made people a little jealous or that kind of just made you feel um, a little bit more upstated to say the, to say the least. Um, another feature that I think is also important other than, you know, the materials that they used and the patterns that really stood out was the leg of lamb sleeves that you, if you look up gun sacks, you'll see that mentioned a lot and stuff. And if you look up gun sacks on Etsy or Poshmark or um, any vintage store online, um, you'll see a lot of the leg of lamb sleeves. So it's an, essentially a sleeve that goes right here and goes down to here and it's just kind of cuffed off and I don't have this button right now, so ignore that. But um, basically the leg of lamb sleeves kind of tightened, were tightened at the bottom and then kind of puffed out at the top. And it was a very Renaissance-esque look. And I've even seen some tags that actually said romantic Renaissance on them. So I'm gonna guess that was probably a collection within gun sacks that happened for maybe a short period of time or maybe an extended period of time and stuff. Um, but it really did feel like, you know, a modern renaissance. So another reason I think that um, gun sacks is so important, other than just the fact that it was a beautiful clothing label that a lot of people wore, was because it was supposedly a huge part of the hippie movement. And, um, you know, that whole counterculture movement, which is really cool because I personally love learning about countercultures and, um, you know, that kind of history. So when I heard that gun sacks was involved, I was a little shocked because when I think counterculture, I don't really think, you know, gun sacks, beautiful dresses that were once, you know, available at Saks Fifth Avenue or something like that. I think, you know, like thrifted maxi skirts and, you know, which, or, you know, some of those like bandeau tops and stuff, or I don't know. I don't quite think you know, these pretty vintage dresses. Um, not to say that, you know, hippie style can't be pretty or anything like that. I just think of a slightly more grungy, um, maximalist take on um, things versus like, you know, a dress up type of thing. But apparently the hippies really did love it though, despite what I, you know, think of when I think hippie or hippie fashion or something. They love them for weddings and big events and uh, they also just love them for feeling a little bit classier while still feeling a little bit understated as well or coming off as understated. Um, so apparently they're a huge part of all of that and a lot of people remember them um, and their times kind of you know, of being a hippie and stuff and wearing the dresses a lot. So, you know, you have two sides of the spectrum there, I think, with, uh, you know, these dresses being super, super classy and then it also being a kind of earthy, down-to-earth type of thing as well. Moving out of the 70s, though, gun sacks kind of took a turn in the 1980s, and if I'm being honest, it really wasn't my favorite turn. Um, I like the 70s and, like, the very, very late, like, 1969 um, gun sacks dresses way better than I like, um anything that came after that so yeah <laughs> the reason I don't really like the 1980s gun sacks dresses that much is because they went from being like these earthy very pretty dresses um to kind of being just like very extravagant party dresses and stuff and um and while I think that that's great and I'm sure that they were very popular during that time I don't really like the style as much and honestly I'm not really a huge fan of 1980s history as much as I am of like the 1960s and 1970s and um, I think you know along this time is kind of when you know we started losing some of what the original gun sacks was and like what a lot of us associate with like the you know 1970s and late 1960s feel of gun sacks. So now Gun Sachs is retired and Jessica McClintock, I believe, still lives on through 
her bridal attire and that kind of thing um which is sold on some websites and it's sold through you know certain boutiques and you know bridal shops and stuff apparently um i honestly i don't know the whole part about that but you know a lot of that isn't really gun sacks that's just jessica mcclintock's like personal brand and just to be clear in case i didn't make it clear and I don't think I did Jessica McClintock like a brand um that's her brand and a lot of those dresses like came in the 1980s and they were party dresses and stuff or um they were like prom slash bridal slash that kind of thing um dresses and they're very different from like gun sacks the label and there's two totally different feels to them so um it's, I think it's best not to get them confused and plus Jessica McClintock was apparently a more expensive brand versus gun sacks which was um not as expensive at the time so now that we've heard the history of gun sacks and we've heard the history of just you know jessica mcclintock a little bit as a designer and again i'm just scratching the surface with this video this is just a basic overview of everything um i think it's a good time to talk about why i think there's a return of the gun sacks dress um, with vintage influencers and you know just vintage enthusiasts in general right now and where you can buy one if you want to get one. So back in 2016, Vogue um, made a post or I'm sorry, wrote an article um, about how the gun sack stress is making a return. And I think that was, and I'm looking at my notes again, um, how the gun sack stress went from cliche to cool is what it's called. And if you look up gun sacks history or um, just, you know, gun sacks uh, in general. If you just type it into your search bar, you can probably find this article pretty easy. So I read that article, and while I think that the Vogue article makes a lot of good points about, you know, what makes the gun sack stress, you know, so great, or why it's making such a return, and a lot of it seemed like it was based off of, like, nostalgia that people had and stuff from the past, I think it's a lot more than that, personally. So gun sacks dresses were a staple at um, a time when there was a lot of social change and um, there was a lot of like, you know, human rights activism and, um, and you know, women's rights um, activism and stuff in the 1960s and 70s. And, you know, everyone kind of wanted to be an advocate for, you know, themselves and what was going on in the world. And I guess you could say that the 60s and 70s kind of were a renaissance, a social renaissance, you know. Um, there was just so many new ideas and, you know, new things to advocate for and, or not new things, but things that people were finally calling attention to. And, um, you know, obviously in the 1960s and stuff, there was uh, the Vietnam War and, you know, there was just, there was a lot of stuff going on and it was a social renaissance and it was a huge deal. And the Vogue article that I mentioned was written the, um, in 2016, so it's been a few years since it was written, um, like what, six years now, which is wild because we had COVID and that feels like, I don't know, time just doesn't feel right anymore. But um, I think that the gun sacks dresses or the prairie style dresses in general are making a comeback um, on, you know, Instagram and social media and stuff among influencers a lot because we're kind of in a social renaissance ourselves right now. As you probably all know, there's been a lot of news about um, political and social issues, which I won't get into on here because honestly, I I just don't feel like it. And um, if you want to look it up, you, know, you can look it up, but you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. And um, people are trying to advocate for, you know, human rights, women's rights, um, people of color's rights. And I think whenever we see a social or political movement like we're seeing nowadays, we also see that reflected in the fashion and in the culture and music and um, just kind of what type of media and content and, you know, things people are doing or wearing or listening to. And, um, you know, there's a huge reflection of society on all of those other factors. And so I, I think in a way, we're kind of going through another social renaissance. So sure, nostalgia might be one of the reasons why people are wearing these dresses more and more, why you're seeing it become a style um, on Instagram, or why, you know, vintage influencers in general are coming back into style, I guess you could say. Um, 
is because we're kind of living in a new 1960s and 1970s and people are having to advocate for those rights again and um we're just kind of seeing that reflected and maybe nostalgia plays a, like a part of it and stuff and i think the brand label also plays a part into everyone wants a gun sax dress because it's collectible nowadays um but yeah i mean those are just my personal thoughts on the brand um uh, and why i think it's popular now now if you want to purchase a gun sax dress um i will kind of put you on to some different things um i've or different places i've seen them so i got mine on etsy at a shop called fresh biddies and i'm not being sponsored or promoted i literally have no followers on this thing or many subscribers on um youtube but um honestly she, uh the girl that sent it to me was great and she even sent a free shirt in the package so i would definitely recommend supporting small businesses that don't really have um or that are just, or you know, maybe small businesses that are well established or that are just getting started because who knows, like the money that you spend at those shops can make a huge difference in their lives. And you know, the reviews that you leave could, you know, help them a lot um, with getting their shop started. And honestly, you're probably gonna end up with a really cute piece of vintage clothing that you're going to treasure forever and maybe even a free gift, like in my case. And um, some. Uh, so a few other places I recommend other than just, you know, Etsy or, you know, small local business, because obviously small local businesses are best, but you can't always do that, is I recommend checking on um, eBay maybe, because sometimes they go on auction and you might be able to get them for a little bit cheaper. Um, but, you know, you have to be careful with eBay, I feel like. And um, Poshmark is a really good place. Um, I bought my gun sacks skirt I have on Poshmark and I absolutely love it and it shipped super fast and so I 100% recommend Poshmark if you're looking for something and I'm pretty sure um, I've never used Depop but I've seen a lot of people post on Depop vintage clothing and a lot of the vintage clothing people that you see on Instagram have a Depop so sometimes they'll sell their vintage like gun sacks or vintage prairie dress or you know just any of those other types of things on um, there so yeah, if you're looking for one, there's plenty of places to find one. Some of them are a little bit more pricey, like some of them are like $500, $600, and I've seen them go up to like a couple thousand. Um, the one I purchased, this was around $100, so a little bit pricey, <laughs> even for me, for something that's so old. Um, and this is one of the more plain ones, but at the same time, it's so beautiful, and it makes for a great photo shoot, even if you just want to get some pictures in it and stuff. So I totally recommend just, you know, looking around, seeing what you can find. And if you see one that you love, go ahead and get it because they sell out quick, I think. And some of the patterns you'll never see again. So long story short, I think Gun Sacks is one of those brands that's just as intriguing as some of their calico prints. Um, <laughs> so just uh, if you're interested in vintage history, some great sources um, online are, I think it's a, um, a website called Vintage Clothing Labels where you can see all the labels. Um, and also I recommend the FIDM Museum, um, and that's the Fashion Institute, and I forget what the uh, the DM part stands for, but um, I know that they're a very reputable source, and they, um, they do a lot of stuff with fashion, so if you're interested in that, I 100% recommend that you go check their website out, and you can find a bunch of stuff about a bunch of different clothing labels and stuff, and I've, you know, I've used it when researching vintage clothing before, and so I recommend that to you as well. So thank you for watching and please subscribe and like and um, just bear with me as I start to learn how to do videos like this. I'm not really the best uh, speaker on camera. So thank you for watching and if you've made it this far, I really appreciate it.